Hello and welcome to the a new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja. Today we are going to discuss the partnership between OneWeb and NSIL, which is the commercial arm of ISRO, to place constellation of satellites in the lower Earth orbit so that connectivity, global connectivity, can be boosted. Let us move ahead and talk about these many topics that we are going to consider understanding from the perspective of GS Mains paper third and also from the perspective of prelims. From the news to what is OneWeb and New Space India Limited, this is the commercial arm of ISRO. We will talk about this as well. We will also talk about what is this partnership between the two and the constellation which is going to help with connectivity. Also, what is the impact of war on this entire partnership, the war between Russia and Ukraine. What does the collaboration mean for India's space industry as India has an emerging space industry? What does it mean for that? Apart from that, are there any challenges with respect to placing these constellation of satellites? And if there are other initiatives which are similar in nature? In the last of the segment, a question will be asked. Moving ahead, let us talk about the particular piece of news that we are going to discuss. We are going to discuss the partnership between OneWeb and New Space India, that is New Space India Limited of ISRO about these constellation of satellites. First of all, let us talk about OneWeb. OneWeb is a UK based global communication network. It would interest you to know that Bharti Airtel, Bharti is actually an investor in this particular communication network. Also, it is powered by a constellation of 648 low earth orbit satellites. That means whatever connectivity there is with the help of satellites, they are placed in the lower Earth orbit. Headquartered is in headquarters at London and it provides high speed, low latency connectivity. Low latency means in real time. In the time as it is happening, it will provide the information on the basis of that only. So latency won't be there. The buffering that you see is called latency. Okay. It provides for governments, businesses and communities all over the world. Now, as we mentioned, low Earth orbit, let's know about it. What is low Earth orbit? As we know, an orbit is a path that is persuaded by any object in the space through which it remains connected to the parent body. Okay. And low Earth orbit encompasses Earth-centered orbits with an altitude of 2000 kilometers or less. As you can see in this particular diagram, the pink line over here, pink circle over here is the low Earth orbit. The commercial use policy or commercial use aspects for low earth orbit is a lot such as for convenient transportation, for communication, for observation and resupply as well as for research. This orbit is very important. The International Space Station currently orbits here only and where many proposed future platforms will be located. That means that low earth orbit Many countries are going to strive for this particular orbit. This should make you understand that space debris concept should come into your mind over here. Also, who will regulate the space? Because now many nations are nurturing their dreams and aspirations of getting into space, specifically in the field of independent communication. So, remember, these are certain challenges. Now, if we talk about low Earth orbit, the speciality for this or orbit for any satellite. The satellite do not always have to follow a particular path around the earth in the same way and their place, their plane can be tilted. That means this is more suitable for changing routes. This particular orbit is more suitable than any other route for changing orbits, okay, for satellites. Satellite in this orbit travel at a speed of around 7.8 km per second and that means it takes approximately for any object to encircle earth in lower earth orbit approximately takes 8 90 minutes okay moving ahead let's talk about new space india limited new space india limited is the commercial arm of isro that means in order to understand the commercial aspects of space this particular entity has come into being in the year 2019 and it is wholly owned by the government of india and it works under the Department of Space, okay, Department of Space. And the mandate is very clear for this. What is the mandate? Mandate is or vision is, not the mandate exactly, the vision is 
in, uh, excel in providing space related products okay and services also emanating from indian space program to global customers okay that means it works with global partners such as oneweb okay and to further spur the growth of indian industry in undertaking technological challenges and space related activities so we can understand that vision is such first of all through this only isro can become a world player first that secondly as it is commercial in nature private sector would be much more interested in getting into deals with it apart from that it can also generate employment right if private sector will get into this then employment will also within the reach also research and development will get boosted apart from that if you can think of any other you can write it down in your notebooks as well as you have to understand when ever we are going to discuss such things please keep a notebook with yourself so that you can open your brains to such kind of segments okay try to write it on your own notebook let us talk about the mandate of it mandate is very clear owning satellites for earth observation and communication application that means earth observation could range from telecommunication disaster management and many other things apart from that drawing maps of water resources can also be done and providing space based services apart from that building satellites on launching all them also as per the demands of the global customers and domestic customers providing launch services for satellites belonging to customers building launch vehicle through indian industry so research and development employment everything can emanate from this launch as per satellite customer requirement whatever their requirement might be that will also be catered space based services related to earth observation and communication satellites on commercial basis satellite building through indian industry and technology transfer as well so you can also add over here apart from all this research and development it could be a part of that only transfer of technology because if india has to become a global player and india has nsil through which it can collaborate with private sectors or uh, global sectors then tra transfer of technology will also occur moving ahead let us talk about other portions of it okay so first we have to understand that the current one will be company's 14th overall space launch with respect to this deal it will be carried by the help of gslv mark 3 the same one which took chandrayaan 2 So GSLV Mark III is India's most powerful launcher, and it is a three-staged vehicle. Okay, so first stage is liquid, 110 stage. Second one is S200 solid rocket booster, and then we have C25 cryogenic stage. Okay, also we have to understand it is capable of launching four-ton class of satellites to geosynchronous transfer orbit as well. All right, so remember all these details. one additional launch will take place this year and three more are planned to be done in the next year and the global broadband international service will be made available by the end of 2023 to be made available in alaska canada uk and the arctic region as well moving ahead let us talk about the highlights of the particular agreement it all started in october 2021 when one web signed letter of intent with nsil that means showing an interest that a partnership like this could take place earlier in 2022 bharti enterprises along with hue and Enter hue communication india private limited held held an agreement to have a joint venture for the similar part of being a space player also one web aims to help in bridging the digital divide in india whatever digital divide has occurred between rural and urban areas because this is the age of digitization so haves and have nots the divide between them has increased digitally so in order to bridge the gap this particular segment this particular agreement is very important moving ahead if we talk about the constellation as i said it's a constellation of 648 low earth orbit satellites to provide high data and low latency it will provide two global two global coverage to the poles the first six satellites of over already launched in february 27 2019 certain took place in 2020 and 21 as well 
and it was the first one was through French Guinea on board a Russian Soyuz rocket. All right, and the latest launched placed 34 satellites in orbit in February 2022, and it brought the total in orbit constellation to 428 satellites. That is more than 60 percent. Moving ahead, let us talk about the delayed impact of war. Now, before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, all the sat all the satellites would be carried from Russian Soyuz rocket only. But after Russia invaded Ukraine, many countries such as UK, uh, US, European Union placed sanctions on Russia, and it also impacted the Russian entities which were involved in the particular agreement. Okay, and on March 2022. There was a supposed launch from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, which is leased by Russia. But before two days of the launch, Russia made certain announcement. It cancelled it, saying that we would launch the satellites only on two grounds. First, UK government dive will divest its stake in the company. First, that. Second, one web provide an assurance that the satellites will not be used for military purposes. But this could not be fulfilled. So, OneWeb's operating loss to, to increase by whopping 631% in comparison to the private previous year is because of this only, this particular move only. Moving ahead, let us talk about the significance of this particular agreement. It will provide huge impetus and even more global exposure to the country's space industry as discussed. Indian space economy last year was valued at Rs. 36. 1794 crores. This was for the fiscal year 2020 21. And India spends a lot more in comparison to China, Germany, Italy, and Japan when we talk about the spending in this field to GDP ratio. But it does less than the US and Russia. So this could be asked in the prelims examination. Remember to memorize this. Moving ahead, let us talk about the challenges. There are many challenges. First is the regulation issue, as I already told you that because of many countries nurturing their dreams to become an aspiring space entity, who will regulate, which countries will regulate the orbit or lower earth orbit, what are going to be the regulation, is there going to be any agreement. Because logistic challenges have not been fulfilled as of yet with respect to building better infrastructure, physical and intangible both, that is also a problem. Difficulty in space observation, seldom times it can happen that because they put satellites in low earth, earth orbit, astronomers find it very hard to observe objects in space. Interruptions can also occur in the frequency of those satellites which are orbiting above them. And space junk, 1 million objects larger than 1 centimeter in diameter are already floating in the orbit. If we are going to provide more such satellites, as we know that for telecommunication, a constellation, not one, but many satellites are needed. So, they will also create space debris. As according to 2019, September 30, 2019, you see that lower Earth orbit has the most number of satellites, right? And you can also see that US dominates it, then China, then Russia, and then others. So, we are constantly adding to the space debris. We need an agreement on that as well. Now, there are certain other initiatives such as 5 to 50 service, this is by one web only and this also belongs to low earth orbit. It will provide connectivity to all regions north of 50 degree latitude. Then we have Starlink which is a group of 1385 satellites and it is a venture of SpaceX. Then Project Coupier, it's a project of Amazon announced in 2019 and Loon project is of Google when balloon actually will be balloons will be used to provide connectivity. This was old one, that means from 2013. Moving ahead, let us look at the question. The new Space India Limited was incorporated in 2017, 2019, 2020 or 2010. Okay, answer this correctly. That's it. Thank you so much for watching.